John, Podcast Fundamentals means talking Amazon. And for today's podcast, we have Marie Donahue, the Vice President of Global Sports Video for Amazon. Andrew, this is the first episode of year two of our pod. And one thing that we've learned, we do, we just have to focus on the fundamentals, not feelings like the uh, best kicker in the NFL. I mean, I love it and I hate it and everything in between. It's, uh, you know, I, I'd be lying to you if I said every time I go out there, I'm not just a little bit nervous. You know, I'm not thinking about, you know, worst case scenario, but it's really important to me and to us to take, you know, those 1.3 seconds between the snap, the hold, and the kick and just focus on the nuts and bolts of what's going to make the kick. And my feelings don't matter. <laughs> And we're back, the Marshan and Oran Sports Media Podcast. I'm Andrew Marshan, sports media columnist for the New York Post. He's John Oran. John Arad. The media reporter for the Sports Business Journal. John, we're doing this show with a studio audience for the first time. Andrew, we're at the Time Center in Manhattan uh, at the CAA World Congress of Sports. It's the biggest sports conference in the country. Every single year, uh, SBJ hosts it. Uh, and thank you for coming in, for, for doing this. We were able to get Marie Donahue from Amazon. She was on the first panel of the day, and then she came and sat down with us, big get. She is fantastic. Really, really good, we'll have that for you in a little bit. She has a little news By the as way, well. if you wanna be a big get, break news on the pod. Absolutely, yeah. Marie, you're, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, she got a little news that we'll have. It's, it's gonna be out there as well, but, but she uh, first broke it on the podcast, so we look forward to that. Even though we're together here, we still start the same way. Who's up? Who's that? Who's up? Who's down? All right, I don't want the studio audience to boo, so we're gonna have you start with the who's up, Andrew. All right, Major League Baseball's my who's up, and you say, well, is this related to sports media? Yeah. The idea of adding the additional round, putting on ESPN, best two out of three, it's a home run. I mean, to me, they started the playoffs with a bang. And, you know, if you talk about competitive balance and what it means after 162, should you really play two out of three? Yeah, that's a discussion. But media-wise, I thought it was really good uh, on ESPN. They had a balance, you know, all the channels they have on, on some days of college football. Next year, no lockout. You know, conceivably, this will be during the week, people out their offices watching these games. Now, uh, I interviewed Rob Manfred on stage, yeah. asked him that question. He, he, he thought originally they were going to go back to the week, but he thinks the response has been so good on the weekend, they're really looking at keeping it on the weekend. All right, well, if it's on the weekends or, uh, or weekday, I, think, I thought it was real good. And I think uh, you know, going forward, you look at the next year, the rule changes, which I'm a big proponent of, speed up the game, the pitch clock, um, and getting rid of the shift. I think this is an upswing possibly for baseball. Uh, so I think a very good week. Uh, and obviously this is their month uh, in terms of being who's up. And I thought baseball got off to a real strong start. Uh, my who's up is Howard Katz, the master schedule maker at the NFL. He created, well, he has a whole team of, th of people, but we're, we're gonna give it to, to Katz. He essentially created a five-week schedule that has benefited every single TV network and Amazon with, uh, with the ratings. I just did a story in SBJ Media. 23 NFL teams are seeing pretty significant increases in their local ratings. And that, to me, what that speaks of is that there are really good matchups, there are really good off-the-field stories, and it's all translating to show that the NFL among anything, just keeps going, I hate to cliche you to death, but they go from strength to strength to strength. It's a TV ratings juggernaut that doesn't, there doesn't appear to be an end. Yeah, it's perfectly suited for TV, and that's why the, the new wild card works for me, because it's, it's those winner go home games that really kind of resonate with viewers in the NFL because of the you know, truncated season, only 17 games, uh, every week's important. And so, uh, yeah, the, the NFL is just off to, just does not stop uh, in terms of uh, their ratings on TV and on Amazon. Uh, we, get to, we get into that with Marie uh, a little bit later. All right, my who's down? Baseball still, ESPN. Uh, I thought, I, I watched a lot of 
uh, Mets and Padres, really all of it, uh, and Carl Ravitch uh, and company, they really didn't, it wasn't great. And then I think, you know, they're going to have to figure out um, you know, how they're going to make that booth better. And I think two things. Number one, Ravitch has to speak less. David Coe needs to speak more. Uh, Eduardo Perez was fine. Like, he was getting in and out. He uh, needs to be more conversational. And that's something they're going to have to work with. They come back with the same Sunday Night Baseball team next year. They've had a lot of movement there, so they might want to keep it steady for another year uh, at least. They need to be more conversational. Uh, there were mistakes made, and that was one thing that distracted. It's always hard when you're replacing the local broadcast that, uh, you know, if you're in New York uh, at SNY, they have Gary Cohen. Ron Darling and Keith Hernandez is iconic group. So that's hard to replace them for the New York fan, but it wasn't good enough. Need more David Cohen. That's something they're gonna have to work on going to next season. All right, so you're really good at this. Like, what would you have Ravage do? Because uh, to me, he's almost like a host that's sort of directing people and asking them questions. But you said that that's not what you want to play by play person well, two to things. Do. Now we're gonna get real technical into the weeds, but you don't want to ask people questions because, you know, first off, these are all ex-players, so they gotta be comfortable where they're gonna wanna go. So you wanna lead them there by saying something, kinda like you would with like a four-year-old, in terms of you wanna lead them to where you wanna go, you don't have to ask them, because you know, the, the, they're gonna say what they wanna say, um, and they see the game a certain way. And I think that's one thing that ravaged, he asked too many questions and puts those guys too much on the spot instead of letting them go where they wanna go. Uh, the other thing is you gotta let the game breathe. And this comes from, you know, good. Like Carl Ravage has had an excellent career, excellent host. Um, but this comes with doing a lot of play-by-play -play and letting that game breathe. Uh, when 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 Buck Showalter came in uh, and questioned Joe Musgrove's uh, if he was cheating or not, uh, that was a there was there was real tension. I, and you didn't really feel it to me if you watch that in the broadcast. Uh, and that those are the moments where you have to heighten it and kind of get those two guys. You have the setup that they want, the pitcher with David Cohn and uh, the hitter with Eduardo Perez to discuss. And they had some moments that were really good that they could build on, but they need to ravage. The biggest thing though is to talk less. You know, and that like watch Joe Buck do in a Monday night game. He lets it breathe. It's a different it's, sport. It's a visual it medium, uh, ultimately. I mean, yeah. Joe Buck the other night on Monday Night Football, he did a little opening and then I, I didn't count it out, but it must have been about 15 seconds where he didn't speak from where they, the kickoff went. Obviously, you have the great crowd noise on Monday night for the game, but you got to let these games breathe. That's always kind of a criticism is that you don't need to talk uh, incessantly. All right, I'm going to do a who's down. And did, did I mention that I interviewed Rob Manfred on you stage? Did, did. I've already said that. Well, my who's down is I feel like we need to have a, a drum roll for this one. Do it. Uh, but it is uh, Chris Ripley of Sinclair. I asked Manfred about the RSNs, and he, his comments were such that a year ago he created headlines because he talked about how the relationship between Sinclair and baseball was fractured. It's still, we're a year on, it's still fractured. This whole business is a relationship business, and that relationship has gotten so much worse. I, I, asked, uh, I asked Manfred, I said, um, and the NBA has done a deal with Sinclair, the NHL has done a deal with Sinclair, but baseball's dragging their feet. And he corrected me, he goes, no, no, we're not dragging our feet, our heels are dug in. I mean, so he, he you know. Good quote, I like that. It was a very good quote, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it just, it just shows that Sinclair still has a long way to go in order to just come up with a business uh, plan or business case for these RSNs and to get the rest of the business on board to support them because this business will certainly fail unless they get the biggest leagues supporting them. Yeah, well, here's the thing, and I, I want to do this on the pod. There's an open invitation to Chris Ripley to come on the pod and explain their plan because I will say this, like I feel like I try to cover this business very thoroughly. I did not know who Chris Ripley was before we started this podcast. Now we mention him every week and sorry, Chris, it's more John, like mostly John, <laughs> which to your credit, right? I mean, I've got on, I've understood it now too. They're in trouble and it's a, it's a huge issue in terms of where sports media is going. But it would be great to have Chris Ripley on to say, hey, look, this is what we're trying to do. Because if I were him, I'd want to be able to do that. So that, that's an open invitation. We've, we've 
tried. We, we've asked. We've asked. It's, but it's now, a, now it's a it public, is a standing uh, a public uh, open invitation. Come on, we'll give you the forum. Chris Ripley, explain what you're trying to do. Uh, and uh, but interesting with baseball, and I also what we talked about last week, something I wrote about with the NBA. There are a lot of there are outs that you to find in terms of the NBA could take back those streaming rights, and what does that mean for? Uh, Sinclair and, and what they're doing in terms of trying to become not only have RSNs but have streaming rights and, and make that work as well. Yeah, so let's just turn this into the first topic uh, because I, I think one of the problems is that for baseball, there are so many baseball games that are on the RSNs and the baseball teams command such bigger rights fees that having the RSNs um, uh, lose distribution, they're losing households, uh, the, the cord cutting is affecting them much uh, quicker than, than than the other channels, and that is affecting baseball teams much worse than hockey teams that are getting a much lower uh, uh, rights fee than baseball, and even the NBA teams are getting a lower rights fee than baseball. So this is something that you know Manfred isn't willing to just to uh, give them all the rights and let them sort of figure it out. He wants to see the plan, move forward with it, and I suspect, if you recall, when when Sinclair bought the RSNs from Disney. Yep. The second place finisher in, in terms of getting the RSNs was a, a group that involved that included Major League Baseball. So let's do the old kitchen table. Kitchen this, table. Right? You, you know I love the kitchen table. Did, so, did I just make the audience's eyes glaze no, 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 over? No, 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 right. no, yours is good. No, yours is good. I just want to get more deeper into where this is going because this is to me the crux of the question is that, so, do you think that Sinclair, that, that year from now, two years from now, will the NBA, will the M M will MLB, will they all own these streaming rights? And two questions here. Let me let me uh, let, let, that's one question. But let me actually ask this one. Does the Sinclair plan work? What they want to do? Because to me, without the Yankees, without these the Lakers, without these tentpole teams, I don't know how you make this streaming thing work. You know, in terms of really have the numbers where you can have similar money that what you're getting to with the RSNs. The Sinclair plan will not work unless they get Rob Manfred and Major League Baseball uh, supporting supporting it because they're just not going to have the rights. Sinclair has the rights to stream five Major League Baseball teams games locally, and those are those are ones where they just did the deals recently, and so they they were able yeah. to get those. They need baseball. And by the way, baseball needs Sinclair too. Base, but baseball doesn't have a but ton do of they? Like, you see, I don't know if, we, if you were like if it was if you went to the open market right now. There's no open market. No, I know. But if you did, mm -hmm. with those rights, would you rather be in business with ESPN Plus, Disney, Amazon, Apple, Peacock, uh, Paramount Plus, or Sinclair? Um, yeah, I think you can throw in a couple of other ones too. But the reality is. They are the ones that own these rights. They for how own long? the RSNs for forever, pretty much. Unless well, it goes, no. the unless rights. It, no, they don't own the. Oh, they don't own. The, right. oh, I'm sorry, I did. I didn't get, get get the thing. They they own the rights go, going for you know, how many ever years? At like, the, like, each of their contracts. Yeah, five years, three okay. years, seven years. But, but the NBA can call them back, and I think if they don't hit certain goals, correct? The NBA can. The NHL can. Uh, Major League Baseball can. Can. But if the NBA pulls them back. What are they going to do? The RSNs, look, we were just talking about how the RSNs are like uh, losing subscribers and their profits are going down, but they're still profitable. They still bring in a lot of money. Yep. There's still a business there. It's a declining business. Sinclair is not a wallflower with all this. Yep. So, so uh, Rob Manfred can talk about uh, his bad relationship with Sinclair and he can talk about not wanting to, to do the rights, but uh, unless Sinclair sells, Yep. Or unless, and this is, I, I know every, all of our sources think they're going to bankruptcy. I don't think so. Like, I, I, oh, you don't think Sinclair? No, I, I don't think anybody wants them to go to bankruptcy okay. because no, no, nobody, uh, the, 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 no, nobody that, yeah. knows how to yeah, deal with it. Then the creditors take some, and the teams get some, and it, that, that's a that's a worst case scenario for almost everybody involved. Got it. And so it's, that makes it unlikely for them to go, to go there. So at some point, baseball is going to have to deal with Sinclair, I would think, right? You would, but it's going to be interesting to see how that. All right, let's move on to topic two. Uh, and the Pac-12, uh, big news, expected news uh, in terms of where that uh, is going in terms of the negotiations. Yeah, uh, SBJ's Michael Smith, a Friday afternoon uh, news break, 
Uh, they got, uh, the Pac-12 is now out of its exclusive negotiating window with Fox and with ESPN. And now we can go talk to Apple and it can talk to Amazon and it can talk to NBC and it can talk to CBS and- um, Turner. And Turner as well. So it, you know, it puts them a little bit closer to getting a deal done and figuring out what their value is moving forward. Yep. Uh, just because they left the exclusive window doesn't mean that ESPN and Fox are out. In fact, I would, I would, uh, I told you beforehand. Let's uh, let's actually make a prediction. I don't know if I want to make a prediction, okay. but I'm willing to say that uh, Fox and ESPN, I would consider to be front runners uh, still, even though it went out into the open market. You would now. Do we want to destabilize or not? Okay. So I reported that they were hundreds of millions of dollars apart over the life of the contract with ESPN. Uh, I don't know if they got to numbers with Fox, but what I was told, I think that's where they were going with them. So now, you're hundreds of millions of dollars apart. I don't know the exact numbers where those are. We have we, we talked with Marie Donahue with the interview. It's going to be played in a little bit. Uh, and this, this subject comes up and she says what she says. Do you think the money's there from Apple, from Amazon, uh, to go it alone, or Turner? I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. People I'm, come to this pod for answers. I know, hey. I know you. I, I, here's one thing about Amazon. They went whole hog after the Big Ten. They put in a great bid for the Big Ten. Uh, they thought they were gonna get the Big Ten, yep. and they didn't. Does that, are they spurned now for college football or can they see a path for these Pac-12 schools to exist on Amazon Prime? I'm not, I'm not sure. I just, I like, I, I, I don't know. I, if I'm the Pac-12 and I get it, we, and we, you know, have said it on this pod, we have Marie later talking about it. I mean, that's, the Thursday Night Football has been a major success. I don't think there's really an argument to counter to say that that hasn't been a success in terms of how many people have watched, in terms of how it's worked uh, predominantly, in terms of the broadcast quality. If there was an argument, I would have made it by now. Yeah, exactly, but, uh, exactly. You're still lurking. <laughs> you, need, uh, you need that better research. So, so that works. But does the Pac-12 work on Amazon? And so you, you, you talked about, you before we did this, you said, let's do predictions. So uh, I thought about it for 15 seconds. So here's my prediction, um, is that uh, I'm going to say ESPN and Amazon get it and I'm going to say the deal is Amazon is we'll hear Marie later they're not in it for secondary stuff but if you're the Pac-12 if I'm them I need the distribution of ESPN I want uh, game day possibly coming I know you know all our friends at ESPN will say they're going to come anyways so we'll see if it's going to the Big Ten when they have no Big Ten in five years maybe they'll do one so they can tell us oh we went but they're not going to be going to the Big Ten regularly and I understand they don't really go to the Pac-12 that often because it's the West Coast that said, you want to be on ESPN. So if you ask me, I think you got you do a you do a top tier deal where there's one and one A deals with Amazon and ESPN, and that's how it plays out. Do they get the money they want? That's like the best way to get the money you want, but I still don't think you get the money you want. Then. Okay, so I'm going to actually agree with you. I would put those two at the top for the uh, Pac-12. Yep. But if I was going to go out and make a bet, you're going to get the best odds on Apple taking the whole thing. And, and creating a uh, MLS type situation with the Pac-12. Is that a good move for the Pac-12? Talk about the stable. We love the word destabilization. I say that is destabilization. I don't think that's a good move at all. No, uh, uh, well, why Unless not, you only care about money. Wait, what, why wouldn't it be a good move? Apple number one has this. The MLS thing has not proven to, that it works. Okay. Well, college, they haven't started it yet. The college sports is different than professional sports. You have to recruit. You need to be in the public eye, and you need to be the forefront of people's minds when you go to recruit and you're, to make your uh, boosters happy. And by going to Apple alone, I don't know if you're doing that. You're making look. The MLS model can work. I'm a big believer. We've talked about this a number of times in subscription. The problem is, it's not. Yes, subscription can work, but not. But growth doesn't necessarily work. And when you close off those walls with a subscription service with Apple TV, I don't know if that's good for recruiting or what the Pac-12 is trying to accomplish in terms of distribution and being seen. So I would be buyer okay. beware on that. So I'm going to play devil's advocate, and I'm going to say something I don't really believe, okay. which is, I think, the worst thing You're for, also, for, wait, for wait, the pod. There's two things. I don't know, and here's uh, something I don't believe. All right, please listen every week. If, uh, if uh, 
actually, Reggie Walker, you, you, you played at Penn State. Yeah, one of our producers, he's, in back, he's, he's, he's back here behind the camera here. We're going after, I'm going to try to recruit a 17-year-old to come play football at the University of Oregon. Am I going to try to do that via ESPN or on an iPhone? All right, hold on. Reggie's behind. He's not on mic. Reggie, what do you say? All right, Reggie. Right. Can, 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 think of, iPhone, no. Uh, Reggie, iPhone. Hey, Reggie, Reggie says, no. Of course he ESPN. agrees with me. He knows, he knows about these kids. So You're my, totally wrong. No. You don't think these kids have the ESPN app? Listen, you just started. You just started talking about Amazon and the great ratings they got. The, like uh, they showed that you but can. But Amazon, but the difference between Amazon and Apple is uh, Reggie, Reggie, who, Reggie, who played a linebacker at Penn State. Uh, I think might have been an All American. Uh, no, nah, he wasn't. He's an, an All American in my <laughs> in my eyes, but, absolutely. No, nah, played at Penn State. That's very impressive. Uh, anyways, he, he's saying he's saying the iPhone. By the way, we are going to get his Joe Pa imitation on here before the before, right. before year three. All right, sounds good. So listen. The idea that Apple can distribute is obviously something that is correct. I'm not going to say it's not correct. But the difference is Amazon Prime Video, according to them, has 80 million people who already use that service. I don't know, like, what I, the numbers I've seen on Apple TV Plus are way lower. So your distribution is already much less. And Amazon Prime Video, for a lot of people, it's pretty seamless because you already have Amazon Prime. I don't think you have that seamlessness with Apple in terms of Apple TV. And I'm not, look, I'm not gonna, I don't really like predictions. You're the one who always lets to make predictions because I like to report it out and see what happens. And I don't, I don't wanna be rooting for something to happen so a prediction's correct. So I don't really know. I wouldn't discount Apple. And, the, and Apple does have a lot of good qualities to bring. But ultimately, I think the ESPN, Amazon structure to we, me makes Again, the we sense. agree. I would put money on the Apple one though because I'd get better odds. Okay. That's how I would But you think it's going to be, oh, sorry. Okay, look, you got, you got Reggie Walker in here, <laughs> all American linebacker. Social media. <laughs> That's what I mean by Oh, okay. Social yeah, so, so Reggie, Reggie has clarified. All right. This is something. Then we got a lot going on here. We got a studio <laughs> audience. John's referencing people who aren't on mic. Everybody is booing Andrew Marchand. I can't believe no, this. No. <laughs> Reggie Walker is also a fine uh, college football analyst. Uh, ESPN, he does games for them. Anyways, the. Wait, who do you get your games for, Reggie? The ESPN, ESPN Plus, that counts. Yeah. All right. So anyways, we're, we're, we're going to have to put, we're going to have to do a whole thing on Reggie Walker and socials. Meet oh. Reggie Walker. Yeah. You know, we should meet the, <laughs> you, meet AC Wyatt, no. he, who's, who's one of our producers, one of the execs. The big, the big gets. Yeah, the big get. Uh, and then also Chris Mason. Chris Mason. They, all, they all put this whole thing together. So we, we might have to do like end of the year podcast where we just talk to them. That's a, that'll right? be our Christmas show, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they, could, they, they should probably save all the outtakes. They could, they could do. So um, we digress. We digress. This so, is it before we get to Marie Donahue. Closing I, remarks. I, I think Apple has a really good story to tell. It's based in Pac-12 footprint. They've already talked to the, uh, the, the Pac-12. The Pac-12 has all the Pac-12 networks that they're trying to figure out what to do. And Apple has nothing. So you're saying Apple? I, no, I, I'm saying ESPN. And, and I'm Amazon? saying Amazon. Okay. But I'm just saying that Apple is an intriguing play that people should keep their eye on. So, just as the, to, 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 I'm right. I'm all over the place. I'm cor no, no, I'm correct is what you're saying. Yes. Right? But you said I say you I might agree. put some I, money on Apple because, because you feel I, the, like they're the more odd, of a long shot. The odds, yeah. The odds, the odds are better with Apple. Right, I think you might have been better with I don't know. Okay. <laughs> all right, one last thing. We got to be right. We always want to be accurate. We, beginning of the pod, we talk about fundamentals. Reggie Walker played for Joe Paterno, was not a linebacker, was a defensive back. All right? You still didn't want to be hit by him. You didn't want to be hit by him. Uh, not sure. We have to check about All American, but uh, he played at Penn State. That's pretty good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we just want to make sure we have that right. Defensive back for Reggie Walker. Andrew, this is the first episode of our second year, and I think in every single episode we've talked about Amazon and Amazon Prime. And to talk about a big get, we have Marie Donahue, who is the vice president of global sports media. That's a big title. Yeah, I think global sports video. The thing, I, the question I have is, you know, Jeff Bezos does want to go to space. If they do, do you go from global sports video to intergalactic sports video? How does that work, Mary? I hope so. And you know, if there are sports events that we think fans will love in space, sure, we, we look at everything, Andrew and John, as I always tell you. All right, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Well, uh, uh, media industry veteran, you spent nearly two decades 
at ESPN, you moved to Amazon uh, several years ago. Uh, Amazon is a media company, obviously. What's the difference working at Amazon from when you were working at ESPN? Well, it's interesting because they're obviously two very different companies. One is a traditional media company. One is, uh, a, we do have a media division, but it's primarily a tech company, a consumer uh, focused commerce company. Um, but my role is not really that different. So when I was at ESPN, I came up through digital. I started at Starwave, which created ESPN.com. So my career at ESPN, I was lucky to be on teams. We were always building and innovating. We built ESPN.com. I remember the first time we put video on the internet, sports video. We built up fantasy games, game casts, things like that. And then I was able to work with the teams that developed ESPN Films and 538 and Grantland and The Undefeated. So, and did incredible um, you know, multi-platform deals, groundbreaking deals with the league. So we really built, I, I really was a builder and was able, got that opportunity to ESPN and also to innovate. And then coming to Amazon, very different company, but ultimately doing the same thing. I had, I, I became addicted to moving forward, focusing on the future and building when I was at ESPN. So then being offered the opportunity to come to Amazon and start from scratch, our, pretty much from scratch, our sports business. It was just an opportunity um, that I, I dreamed of. And so coming into Amazon, I focused, I've focused, I've built my dream team. I have the best team in the business. I hope we get to talk a little bit about them on the podcast because I'm so proud of them. Um, and we built from scratch. So at ESPN, it was an established business, established sports business, great innovation. But here, starting from scratch, and, and, and it's been phenomenal. And obviously, I've been there. I've been there four years. It feels a lot longer. Um, but now we're really hitting our stride. And you know, I rode crew in college. And then, so what I always talk about is it's a great it's it's a great um, example for how you succeed in any anything um, team focused. And our our team at Amazon is incredibly team focused. And it's hard work. You, you, you work your butt off preparing, but when you're all rowing together and perfect timing, the boat just kind of slides on the water. And that, that's where we are now. We're having, you know, not Thursday night football we're talking about, what we're doing in Europe, what we're doing in Latin America, India. So we're just having a ball and a really exciting time for us. Well, now this is important, before we get back to media, if, we're, if crew at Columbia, Right. Yes, and, and I was not a coxswain, I was a rower. Okay, you're a rower. Uh, and people don't know, I actually do know this, coxswain's like kind of the person who's telling everyone what to do, which... You so you're you yelling do. at everybody. You're yelling at everybody. Yeah. 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 I'm not a yeller. No, no you're like, one of the strong people. But what, is that in like the Hudson River? Like where are you... Where do, where do yeah, you so we rode on the Harlem River. Oh, we raced River. Okay. on the Harlem. It was, don't it's, fall in. No, no. There was a dead body when I was a freshman. So that's another story. <laughs> no, we're going to have to get to that. We'll get back to the media. All right, go ahead. All right, that's good though. That is a good one. I gotta find out more about this dead body. Did you actually see the dead body? Yes. Oh, oh. Hold on. You gotta give us give us a quick no, dead no, body. No, no, literally story. you just see something floating and we kept moving and All then right. we heard about the details later. Well, it is New York, maybe it was a rat. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. It was an actually an advantage rowing on the Harlem because when people would come from Princeton and and places like that, they didn't know what they were handling. We we had a great current that really helped us, a tricky current. All right, so you're at Amazon now you're building up the sports business uh, and, and you have a ton of rights globally. Five years from now, what do you hope Amazon Prime is in terms of sports? Look, I think we've got a great start and we're in this business for the long term. Not only five years, we're actually thinking 10 years out. So we're, you're going to continue to see us start with the fan, figure out what works for fans, what can we do to improve their situation to improve their enjoyment and the value and the convenience they derive from sports. So I think you'll see us, you'll see us active in many more countries. You'll see us active with many more marquee rights. I think we'll probably start to do some creative partnerships. I think that's something that, that um, the industry is ripe for. So yeah, we're, we're long-term players. What does that mean by creative partnerships? I'm not sure what it means yet. I just think that right now is an incredibly disruptive time in media, particularly in sports. And I think Disruption um, provides opportunity for innovation um, and for creativity. And you know, my my I was a lawyer, and so I really started deals. Um, and I just think there are ways. Uh, I think Amazon can be is and can be an amazing partner for leagues. You've already seen it with the NFL. We've seen it with Champions League, with the Premier League. And I think we're going to continue to explore those partnerships. Understand what. When we, when we did the NFL deal, yeah. it was really important to them. They wanted a few things. They wanted, for months you agreed on the value, of course. They wanted to make sure they had reach. 
reach was incredibly important to the NFL. They wanted to, they came to us largely because we were innovating and they wanted a commitment that we would innovate. Um, and they also wanted us to reach new audiences. And so we crafted our deal and also when we were getting ready to launch Thursday Night Football, we kept that in the back of their mind. So it's no surprise to us that we're getting credit for being innovative, that we're driving a younger audience. We can talk about it, but we've got, compared to last year, um, the TriCast, the first four games of Thursday Night Football last year, we're literally eight, we're, we're up 67% in the 18 to 34 demographic. That's insane. Our average age audience for this year is eight years younger than the NFL telecast audience. And I think, I'm a believer, I think that will continue to, that age will continue to drive down. The more people understand we have sports on Amazon, we're primarily a living room device company. So much of our usage is through living room device because of our VOD history and the incredible um, signal and delivery we, we have for high quality video. I think you'll continue to see more fans come to us for mobile. And I'm a big believer that will drive our age down even younger. So, so it's important to us to understand, we talk about our customers and I call them sports fans. Leads are also our customers. And so I think over the next five, 10 years, we will continue to listen and work with leads and help them manage through this disruptive state. Andrew and I have gone nuts over these numbers and we talk about them like every, well, I have anyway. He has, <laughs> I don't go nuts. Yeah. Did, did, did that surprise you, or did you sort of know that was that, that you were going to be that much younger? And that... yeah, we didn't know the specifics. You know, we we I think what we learned a lot with Twitch and what we did previously on Prime Video is young people want to be engaged, and particularly younger audiences. I, they love sports. It's just they don't want to pay for a bundle, pay for a cable bundle. But we would when we when we were on X Ray on Thursday Night Football when we had the TriCast those viewers watch 30% longer. And we didn't really track our demos as carefully, um, but we knew we were getting a younger demo from Twitch. And, and so, no, we're not surprised. We're delighted, as I would say. And I think we're going to continue to double down on those things. You know, we did with Dude Perfect, which is family viewing, and we think they're quite... I'm not even sure those kids are being measured, to be honest. So I would, I would think that our audience might be even younger. And it's interesting what you said about the data. For the first time for a streaming service, we've got Nielsen, they're measuring us, and we have first party data. We actually know who's watching and we're able to share this information with you guys as, and with lead partners as well as with advertisers. So we're really excited. And the more we know about our audience, the more we can serve them. Now, when we look at Thursday Night Football, if I'm not mistaken, you're the one who first authored like the game plan internally about- Right, well, we write a document. That's yes. one difference from ESPN. We write a document. Any any big decision, any big recommendation, you write it. You write a six-page document. And so, me and my team, uh, a guy named Charlie Neiman, who so how big is this document? Six pages. It can't be longer than six pages, but it can have um, attachments and exhibits and things like that. So we wrote the document, and you know we're true believers in sports. That's why we're here. Um, we we thought it was a once in a decade opportunity to get um, the best some of the best content in the world, some of the most powerful. You, you see the telecast, your, your list this week that had the top um, telecast for the year. You didn't put us in because, I don't know, you have something against streamers, but that's another story. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a list of TV yeah. shows, like the yeah. top shows uh, so on they TV. Didn't, cause, yeah, so, so but, we didn't we make the list. Yeah. We, we should, but we're, we're, look, we're pushing for an asterisk so we <laughs> can be go. included. Uh, you, you will see if, uh, if we buckle, if they're on the next list. So this, else we, this is in the Sports Business Journal list that it's only, you've only had the TV, now you need to, yeah, I think it makes sense to add the streamers. Well, you know why we don't add the streamers is because how many people watch Stranger Things the first day on Netflix? I don't understand the question. Oh, because you're saying like this could, is a one day. Oh, I see. Could they be on? Like, like we, we just don't oh, know. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got it. Are, it's a, it's a, it's a, you're yeah. adding up everything. Yeah, I mean, we'll continue. But now we give you the Nielsen, compilers. so we They're give compilers. you that window. So I would argue it's comparable, but that's we don't want we don't want to bore the audience. All right. So. Uh, by the, the way, the number of people that turned off the pod right now, when, when we got into deep No, no, no. Sorry. I'll do a little Francesca. They're compilers, the streamers. My, my, my FAN people will get that. Um, so as you get to Thursday night, you put it together. Yeah. Tell us about how you put everything together. Uh, I may have written a story or two about the yeah. whole process, if I recall. Um, the, uh, what, what are you trying to accomplish, and what have you felt like 
you know, we're going into what, week four now? Yeah, um, four down, 11 to go. We're four down, 11 to go. Yeah, what were you trying to do and how have you felt like so far you've accomplished? Yeah, I mean, we're look, we have an incredibly high bar and we, we are never going to be fully satisfied, but we're, we're pretty thrilled right now. I mean, the tech and the product have been phenomenal. The business metrics have been great. Uh, the three hours were the highest prime signups in the U.S. ever. Um, and then, you know, my heart obviously is in the content and the production and, and what we show to fans on the screen. And we just, we're just thrilled. I mean, I put together my dream team behind the scenes of Jared Stacey who runs production. We've got Mike Muriano and Ryan Spoon. I'm sorry, not Ryan. I used to work with at, yes, uh, Ryan Spoon, Amazon, yeah. at, at ESPN, Spoon Daffery. Um, Betsy Riley, just an incredible team. Baltimore's um, own Betsy Riley. Uh -huh. Baltimore's own Betsy exactly. Riley. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got an incredible team um, behind the scenes, the best in the business. Obviously, Fred, um, Fred Gadelli and um, Pierre Musa, who's directing it for us. So we knew our broadcast would be great because we had the best team behind the scenes. And I can't forget Amina Hussein, who's running our talent um, office. And so. Then the next thing was to get our talent, because we knew the broadcast would be great. We invested the money. We have an incredible truck set up. It's actually eight trucks. It's the closest thing you'll see to a Super Bowl set up. We have more cameras, two fighter cams, everything you can imagine. And then we had to figure out our on-air our, our on -air talent. And this is where I think we have struck gold. And it, it was hard work, as Andrew um, followed. I felt like he had a tracker on my phone. But, you know, in the booth, we've got Kirk and Al who are both legendary in their own field, but new chemistry, new, 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 new relationships, so people are intrigued. And Kirk can obviously, he knows these players from when they played in college. He, he's, he's literally at Thursday night, the hardest working man in sports. He's at Thursday night football, then he's at the big game on Saturday. So he's continuing um, to educate fans and bring new perspective. We've got Kaylee Hartung, who obviously an ESPN veteran, who then went to cover more hard news at CBS and ABC. Good Morning America, so we've got a great interviewer. Um, and then the real, uh, the, the thing we also got to start from scratch was the studio show. And this was one actually you didn't cover as closely, but we spent so much time on this because it was really important to us that, going back to my crew background, they be hard workers, they be good teammates, that they be joyful and excited about covering football, and that they want to bring something different. They want to bring fans closer to the game, closer to players. So we've got three players right off the field, which was important to us. We've got Richard Sherman, um, Andrew Whitworth, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. These guys are phenomenal, and they love the game. They love the brotherhood of the NFL. We don't even have to get them. We have meals and things like that on Wednesdays and Thursdays when we're preparing. Even when we're not working, they're together. They're off getting chicken and waffles, or they're in the lobby just talking football, jawing constantly. It's so much fun. We've got Carissa Thompson, which... You know, Carissa, the first meeting we had with the rookies, and, and Tony Gonzalez was there as well, when Carissa and Tony came in, the first thing Carissa said to these guys is, I got you. I know you're new. I got you. I, I'm going to take care of you. And it just started um, the, entire, the entire attitude and just safety. And Tony Gonzalez, a great veteran, he said, you know, we can have fun, but we cannot have fun. I think we should have fun. And so we've got a veteran there. So I think those guys, they literally... Everyone says they're, they have great chemistry. Everyone says they're getting better to week to week. I think they get better hour to hour. These guys, this chemistry, they are gelling in a really special way. And Taylor Rooks. Taylor is probably, I would say, except for you two, the best interviewer in the sports business. If you sit down to a meal with Taylor, you will tell her anything. This happens to us all the time when we're, because we're going on site every week, yeah. so which is really exciting for fans, we hope, but also for us, because we all get to spend a lot of time. She's phenomenal. Knows she gets athletes to talk to her and tell tell her things that just amazing conversations. She knows social media better than anybody. She's helping all of us. And then Michael Smith. I mean, Michael uh, from his old ESP. He's gone back to his old ESPN NFL journalism day, so he's having a ball. And I'm going to break news for you guys because I love you. Uh, starting this week, starting this Thursday, we'll have Marshawn Lynch. So Marshawn will not be on set with us every week. He's primarily going to be some pre-taped pre segments, which will be really fun. He's going to go out in the community um, with sports fans. This week, I think we've got him playing football with some of the Highland Park kids um, in Chicago. I know coming up, we've got him feeding alligators. So he's just, I, I know he and Sherm will have some fun. We won't be able to keep them apart. But I know it's a huge roster, 
but we've got a lot of time. We've got a pregame show of an hour. We've got halftime. We've got 10 minute postgame. And then we've got the nightcap, which we love. And I think, I think is going to, is already we're holding ratings really long because of that, that long um, postgame show. And I think, you know, we aspire to be one of the best in the business. And I, I think we're close already. So sorry for, I'll take a breath. Yeah, now. no, the news is, so Marshawn Lynch, though, you know, I had reported about him possibility. He had the DWI, I think, recently. Was that the holdup with him? What was, uh, why, why, why is he starting now as opposed to starting at the beginning of the year? No, I mean, I think, I think Marshawn wanted to work through some things. We were already working with him. We never, we never, um, we never walked away. We just worked through some things with him and, you know, we're excited. We can't wait for him to join. So, you know what I find unique about uh, your studio show? is that they are people that are right off the field. And it, it's a big contrast to what Fox does and what uh, CBS does uh, in particular. They're, they're gonna get older. Do you, is your strategy about shuffling that and always having sort of younger people that can talk on the field? Or do you want to grow old with this crew? Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't really thought that. I know I said we're planning. He's already and, fought. You just sound right there. He's already getting rid of him. I know. <laughs> Ryan I know. Fitzpatrick. So I'll Sure, you, you're doing a great I, job. Now I don't going. know. Ryan Fitzpatrick may get mad at me for saying this, but uh, we, we always go out. And we all go out after the game, you know, to kind of decompress and because we all like each other and it's fun. And it was Ryan said to me, I'm sorry, I, I don't think he meant this confidentially. He said, we can do this forever. Um, and that just made my heart, you know, I, th I think he, he, he particularly, he, um, Sherman and um, Andrew, just going through this together, these guys, um, the whole team is phenomenal, but I think those guys, you know, when you're rookies going through something together, there's a bond there. Um, and I tell you, one of the things, one of the challenges we have is when we're getting ready to shoot, it's a live show, is to get these guys off the field because all the current players want to talk to them and know them. And that was one of the little tests we had besides hardworking and all that was who would, who would players want to stop and talk to? Um, and, and these three guys rose to the top. And th Thursday is actually an advantage if you're willing to pay because guys can, they have their weekends, which yeah. is very important to, you know, ex-players if they have kids yeah. and they want to see their kids. And, all right, let's get more into that. Absolutely. The, and Ryan has seven kids. Yeah, seven kids. Yeah, I, th I talked to him. And I don't know, I forgot all the different type of minivans, but he doesn't have an expensive one, he said, because it's just Cheerios and, <laughs> and stuff all over the place. So he doesn't. And, all right, let's get into um, just the business side of it. You know, you did the what you're looking for. What's an Amazon product? Like, obviously, Thursday Night Football. Yeah. Uh, I was a big proponent of it, of, you know, this made sense for Amazon. I can't remember John's takes. Oh, you can look in the archives if he was as big of a proponent. But when you look going forward, what's an Amazon tactic? What are you looking for on the market? We know you yeah. were involved with Big Ten. Um, we know you- Formula One. Formula One. Uh, what, was the, what was the latest one? Oh, Champions League as well. Um, what, what are you looking for when you look in the market? Right, well, you can also look at the properties we have already. So in addition to NFL, in Italy and Germany, we've got Champions League, top, top weekly match. In France, we've got Ligue 1, 80% of their top, um, that's their top, their top league. We have 80% of the matches. In the UK, we have EPL. In India, we have cricket. Um, in the US, we also have the Yankees. We have the Storm. We have the WNBA. So we're looking for marquee sports properties. We, we, we are not really interested in you know, a secondary digital package. We are very focused on marquee sports properties. And we look at everything. I said it on the panel earlier today. We're not an incumbent. We're an insurgent. And, you know, the easiest thing for properties or anybody to do is renew a deal. I've done deals for a living. It's always easy to renew a deal. It's harder to get a new deal done. And so we're working through that. We're, we're going to, we look at everything. We're really focused on marquee properties. And we're going to keep coming. We're going to keep knocking on the door. And what I, I can't, you know, what I will tell you is we are so thrilled and joyful about the properties who have come with us. And, you know, the list I just, you know, Yankees, Murderers Row, that's a Murderers Row of properties. So we are thrilled with the partners we have, thrilled that they see the future the way we do and how sports is going to be consumed and how they can reach a broader, younger audience. So we're thrilled with who we have, but we're going to keep knocking on the door. How do you decide what, what a marquee property is? We start with fans. And so, you know, if you're in Italy, there's, it's different than what it is in Spain and in, in the U.S., you can't get better than the Sounders in the storm in the state of Washington. So we really do look at fans and see what, what it's not always um, necessarily the size of the audience because we have experimented with local, obviously with the storm and the Sounders and the Yankees, but it's passion and what can we add? 
for the sound for um, the storm and the Sounders um, deal, we actually um, we had the easiest marketing message in sports. You live in Washington, you have Prime, you can watch the games or the matches. So we always we really do start with the fan and figure out is there a way we can improve the situation for them. Now, when you look at college football, um, you know obviously there's two packages that are kind of uh, going to be out on the market: uh, the Big 12 and the Pac-12. I know you're gonna. I know you guys have some interest in, like you just said, you look at everything. But just when you look at college football and what it can do for you with Thursday promoting into Saturday, how important is it for you to, to really try to, in the near term? Because there's some of these other conferences. Yeah. They have long-term deals. Those are the ones that are out there. How important is it to you to maybe get involved in that? And what are you looking for? Yeah. No. I mean, you you wrote the book right there. I mean, it would be excellent to have Thursday night lead into um, Friday, maybe Saturday maybe Friday, potentially Saturday, big college football. So we're actually, we're very interested in that. Um, but, you know, if we're, we're going to try, we, we obviously we don't talk about specific negotiations, but we're going to keep knocking. And the thing about sports is there's a lot of marquee properties out there. So, we'll, yeah, we're very interested in big-time college sports. Anybody would be. We're also, you know, I, there's no secret, NBA. We we're, we're really interested in the NBA, obviously. We'd love to be more business with the NFL, with baseball. I mean, the marquee properties, um, they're pretty clearly, pretty easy to define. You just like ding, ding, ding my brain. I, that question I meant to ask you that uh, we actually kind of discussed before. It was good, good job by you. So with the NFL, when it was announced, there was a possibility that you guys could get a playoff game for, for Amazon based on numbers. The numbers have been good so far. I presume they have, it's not obviously after the four, first four weeks. But what are you looking for? When could that possibly happen? And what do you, what do you, what do you have to reach for that to occur? Yeah, so I can't, I, I, you know, the, the actual, uh, there's a confidentiality agreement with the NFL, so I can't give you details, but I do think the NFL, I, I think the NFL is happy with our audience numbers, and so I, I think there's a playoff game in our future. I can't tell you what year, but I'm very confident we will, we will, we will ultimately have a playoff game. When you go into these rights negotiations, and you're the one that's doing the rights negotiations, yeah. like, what, is your, what is your pitch? Is it about... Yeah. Reach, reaching new fans is it about uh i mean the quality of the thursday night football stream is fantastic yeah we have we have so the good news is i've been doing this for about 20 years so the good news is i'm generally going in to speak to people i know i was tell roll up we roll up and i did two nfl deals roll up says he doesn't listen to the pod by the way. <laughs> um that can't be true um so a lot of times i know these guys um and so obviously there's a a, a trust and, and a and a and it's pretty easy. We speak the same language, uh, but no, we go in. We say, look at where, look at the audience. Look, look at the trends. Look at, look at what happened to entertainment. When things, things, everything's moving more towards streaming. You can, you can see. We start with two charts, which show um, the pay TV um, penetration and streaming usage. Yeah, and then you know we could walk out then, but we don't. We actually talk a lot about um, how we value customers, how we serve fans. How, what we can do with these leagues to help them reach fans. And, you know, they really care about their products. And they really, it's really important that you treat it with, with great respect and you respect their fans. So we talk a lot about that. We show them a lot of examples of what we've done um, with other leagues. And we also talk to them about how we can help them reach those fans um, more directly. And that's something we'll be doing with all of them. You said you wanted to do more with the NFL. Sunday ticket, you know, you, Apple... Disney have been, you know, uh, connected to, to, to it, possibly. Apple seems like might be the one that's going to get it. But when you look at the, forgetting if you're interested or not, you're, uh, you know, you're not going to tell us, like, there's a deal done. That'd be great. If you want, you could. But, uh, but when you look at Sunday Ticket, like, what, what is the advantages for Amazon with a package like Sunday Ticket? I think anybody would be interested in Sunday Ticket. I mean, you guys know. I mean, I, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm a Patriots fan. You know, I, I, I never get to watch them in New York or L.A., so... Um, I think it's some of the best content, and obviously we're huge believers in NFL content. I think any property would be thrilled to get Sunday ticket. Yeah, just price tag is probably the issue. I think the NFL wants a couple of dollars, right? Uh, I, a little bit, yeah. You're not going to get it on the cheap, I think, is what, where Andrew's going with that. I, I have one more question. Um, so, like, going back to your ESPN days, the business was so simple for me to understand. 
uh, it was uh, you know an affiliate fee that's more than ten dollars a month per subscriber per month, and when it was advertising, and it just it, it made sense. Where, how does Amazon make money off of these sports rights deals? Yeah, so it's so funny you say the business was so simple because I came up through digital, which was always shifting sands and we didn't make money for years and we had to convince them that we were actually valuable and we were the way to engage with fans and all that. So it's funny, it's different perspective. Um, so look, Amazon obviously, um, Prime is a membership service. Prime makes sense for Amazon. We really think it makes sense for Prime members. So sports really helps us with Prime memberships. It helps us activate, acquire Prime memberships, get people who have Prime to activate Prime video, get folks who watch Prime video to watch more Prime video. So we absolutely, there's the whole Prime flywheel that we have at Amazon. And, we'll, and also for us, differentiated at Amazon, uh, from the content perspective, we have advertising. Amazon has Freebie now, which is an ad-supported video service. And the NFL and sports is some of the most highly valued, most expensive premium video advertising. So that's when we, when we wrote that document for management at Amazon to get the NFL deal approved, we, we spread a lot of ink on how this is a game changer for advertising. So advertising cannot be understated how important that will be. And this is an 11 year deal. And we, we are already innovating, but you're gonna see us continue to innovate. We've got Nielsen, which is the currency that we need to engage in advertising with big clients. And we've got first party data and we've, we, know what, we, know what, um, we know what fans are doing, we know what their history is. And obviously we have great trust with our customers, so we never violate that. But we really can help advertisers reach, reach customers. I, I got one last one on women's sports and women in sports media. You know, we're about a half century of Title IX. Uh, you know, things have changed. But I just wonder your perspective, because obviously your position, mostly men, almost entirely, and you're unique in, as a woman in, in that uh, high profile role. So what's your take on terms of women's sports and women in media and where we are and where we're going? Yeah, so I, I, I gotta give you a little, I gotta tease you about this. I, I think I'm the first woman you've had on this podcast. I don't know, I have to look it, it up. We tried, you know, we definitely yeah. tried. I, I, it, it is true, this is true. Okay. So yes. after 50 years of, of Title IX and one it's year first of this life. podcast, yeah. we have the first woman. There you go. Um, I know you did say I was the first tech person, so. You were the first, well, I said I wasn't sure on the woman aspect of it. <laughs> we have tried, the, for the record though, we have tried a number of occasions. We can well, that's names, okay. So we, we will. That's okay, you just have to try harder. Yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't resist. Listen, so I asked the, all right. No, I couldn't resist, but what I would tell you is what I Mark Yeah. <laughs> well, John's the one I say every week. No. That's a, John's Look, no I, am, no. I am a big believer in we have to do a better job in sports in reflecting our audience. And that's in front of the camera, behind the camera, where we put our resources, where we put our money. Um, so, you know, I think it's up and down. I know I personally am very committed. At Amazon, we've got the WNBA deal. We've got Seattle Storm. Um, we continue to look for opportunities, but we, we need to try harder. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and, and there are more women coming up. There, uh, but it, I, I, I would have wished we'd be further. I mean, it's so funny. I mean, you, you know, Karen Brodkin, who Karen and I did the Pac-12, the Big 12 deals together years ago. So there's a few. It's like the OGs. Sometimes we look around the room and we say, we thought there'd be more of us. Um, so we still hope there'll be more of us and it's an opportunity, but it's also a responsibility we all have. So I am thrilled to break down this barrier. Big, this, this is the most meaningful barrier I've ever broken in like my we career. I feel like confetti now, yeah. <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. It really uh, has. Uh, I've been covering you for two decades now. Thank uh, you. We're thrilled to have you on uh, to, to talk about Amazon, Amazon Prime. We are thrilled at SBJ to have you on the CAA World Congress of Sports uh, opening panel. Uh, Marie Donahue, thank you very much. And thank you guys. I know you, you talk a lot about us on your podcast. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you for and that. John's usually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm more of the skeptic, Marie. Yeah. Thank All right, you thanks, guys. Marie. But thanks again. Andrea, I don't know where to start. I, uh, she broke news with us. Yeah. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. That was, uh, that, that, that was great. She talked about a dead body floating in the Harlem River. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one. Yeah. I, I was just, I, I was taken by her, uh, just the, the level of excitement that she described 
around Thursday night football. I mean, I, I, I feel that they have people that are not steeped in television and uh, on air, and there, there's an excitement about creating something that I don't get at you know Fox NFL Sunday or, or ESPN. Like, not that they're not excited. There there's just seems to be a different level about creating something at Amazon well, that new. really came through. It's new. You know, it's like yeah. a new board. So it's, that is exciting. Uh, I think, to me, a big takeaway from that is something we've known and we've talked about a lot. I think you had it as your who's up a couple of weeks ago. But the NBA. I mean, she said we're interested. Now, you know, she basically said they're interested. They're going to look at everything. But I do think if you look at what's going on with Thursdays and the success of Thursdays, you just can imagine Amazon getting some sort of package, being creative. I know you've talked about maybe um, around uh, Black Friday and Christmas Day and those things. I think more than that, personally. I, again, who knows where that will go? But I do think there is potential for Amazon to really They've shown it, right? We're talking about Apple um, before we spoke to Marie, and I, I don't know if Apple's shown it yet. They haven't I, shown it yet. They did. The no. baseball, again, we have compared, and I have compared baseball with Apple to football, and it's a, it's not really totally fair because that's a billion dollar deal. You know, that one's less than 100 million, or maybe it's around 100 million um, with the uh, Apple MLB deal. But the production became an issue in terms of the broadcasters. Uh, Amazon just, They've not had that issue. And even like their alternative broadcasts have been pretty good ideas. Yeah. And so they've they've done well for themselves because you can offer the money. And this is thing we always argue about. You're like, well, why didn't they get the Super Bowl? Well, you gotta prove you can do it before you start getting Super Bowls and better packages. And so even if you're Amazon or Apple, I don't think you just start at the top when the money's similar. All right, so Formula One and uh, the Big Ten and UEFA, they turned away Amazon, even though Amazon was offering a bigger check than traditional linear TV companies. I'm really, I'm wondering, one of the things to look at is the next one that comes up, are they gonna do that? Because Amazon has shown they're gonna spend and they're gonna produce high quality video and that these leagues, like not, they like money first, but they also like that the, the people treating their product, their, their games, as well as Amazon's been treating the NFL. Yeah, last thing I'll say about this, and uh, there's something I was told. When Amazon was trying to figure out what they were gonna do with Thursday night and how they're gonna produce it, I think when they first talked to Fred Goodelli, it was more of like what, you know, kind of more of a seeking advice kind of thing. And the point Goodelli made to them was, you only get the one chance to make that first impression. And this is gonna kind of guide how you're looked upon. And then they said, all right, well, we wanna have the top production. So they went out and hired Fred Goodelli, who's you know one of the best producers out there. Um, and so I think that statement that they've made has can really help them as they go forward. I mean, they're in good position. There's no, besides the fact you'd rather be on maybe broadcast still, there's no real reason you know, after this Thursday night that you'd say no to, uh, to Amazon. The one thing, that's different though, of course, is does a Pac-12 audience, you know, is that big enough to come for a Saturday game? You know, the NFL is the NFL. It's a different animal as we've talked about. It's not the Big Ten. It's exactly. not the SEC. Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go to our call of the week. Call of the week. This week, uh, we go back to the playoffs and this is exciting. Uh, it wasn't an elimination game, but uh, the Guardians, Beat the Rays, marathon game. Uh, a lot of great calls. Book Shambi on ESPN had a very good call. Tom Hamilton, the local guy for the Guardians, very good call. But I went with Dave O'Brien, ESPN Radio. Not as excited as Shambi or Hamilton, but just this is a nuts and bolts, uh, just by the book, game ending call that I thought hit the right notes. And a veteran rocks and delivers. Swing at a high fly, deep left center. That is back there, back there, gone! Gonzalez walks it off for the Guardians! And this place is bananas! Yeah, I can see why you like that one so much. That fits in, it's, it's minimalist. He described what was happening, and it's like, there's always a benefit 
to doing calls on radio, though. I mean, 100. percent Yeah, that, exactly. And you also have to realize it's different uh, broadcast. This is ESPN Radio. It's a national broadcast. It's not the home team broadcast. So uh, you got to kind of serve different people. And I thought O'Brien hit on um, you know all of the uh, the right notes that you wanted to to get the excitement, to tell what was happening hear the crowd noise, you know, on, on radio you still want the crowd noise, and so I thought that was excellent. So, you know, that, that's, uh, that's, that's our call of the week. Well, it's great getting you here. It's fun doing it face-to-face, -face. A, lo a little bit different. I think we've ran long because we're just talking with each other. It's a natural I don't think we're here. People are like, give us more, right? People out there. But listen, if you do want to give us, you want more, if you could give us a review, uh, that helps. If you give us the five stars, that helps. Um, and if you subscribe, that really helps. And really, we've uh, a year in now, first show, second year. Uh, Marie Donahue, great. Uh, some big gets planned for next week. We might not be, I told you last week, you said, let's, we preview the big get. And then next week, we got a big get, but we won't, we're not, should we preview yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, let's preview right, it. Why not? Pedro Martinez. Pedro, Pedro Martinez was supposed to be this week. Yeah. If something came up, and so uh, we, 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 we had could to, have done it. It's just the, the logistics. It made it easier. Um, and Marie was great uh, to come on. So, but thanks for, uh, it, was, it was real fun. Yeah, thank you.